Hello everybody, welcome to Movies by McManus, the channel where we break down movies, comics, TV, books, in the context of who created it and what effect it's trying to have on the world. And this week we're going to be talking about the 2018 book, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, by Michelle McNamara. So this book is about the real-life serial murderer, the Golden State Killer, but was actually released two months before the killer was caught, which sort of helps the book, one, in creating an aura of suspense, but also in focusing the story away from the killer and onto the victims where the focus belongs. For some background, Joseph James D'Angelo was a serial killer and rapist who terrorized neighborhoods in California from 1973 to 1986. And not only was he not caught until 2018, but he wasn't even very well known, not until the early 2000s, when our author Michelle started writing about him on her true crime blog. Now, there are actually a couple of reasons for this that are stated in the book, mostly because for a long time, they thought that his crimes were being done by three different men, mainly because he attacked in three different areas and because his crimes kept evolving throughout the years. For his earlier crimes, he was known as the Visalia Ransacker, then later as the East Area Rapist, and finally as the original Night Stalker with the original Night Stalker murders not even being connected to each other until over 10 years after he stopped killing. He was given the name the original Night Stalker since his crimes were done in a manner and close by to the killings of Richard Ramirez, who had already been dubbed the Night Stalker. But Joseph D'Angelo was a few years earlier. And it wasn't until 2001 that through DNA evidence, they're able to find out that the East Area Rapist and the original Night Stalker were in fact the same person. So instead of constantly referring to him as the East Area Rapist slash original Night Stalker, Michelle instead coins the name the Golden State Killer. This book follows Michelle's journey, obsessively researching the case to try to find the identity of the Golden State Killer. She believes that this case is entirely solvable, especially now that DNA evidence can become a factor. Unfortunately, Michelle McNamara died in 2016, before the killer was caught and before the book was even complete. So large portions of the book are made up of her notes and excerpts from her podcast. Now, Michelle's goals are very clear from the beginning of the book. This isn't an inside the mind of a killer like a regular true crime book would be, but instead almost a call to arms to say, yes, this case is solvable and these victims matter, and to bring attention to a murderer and rapist who has been at large for almost 30 years. And in that way, Michelle brings a humanity to this case that is lacking in other true crime authors. To Michelle, there's nothing to romanticize about a serial killer. This was a real person with real victims who needs to be brought to justice. This point is brought up more so in the HBO documentary I'll Be Gone in the Dark than it is in the book, but there is a sexualization of victims when it comes to true crime reporting, and a romanticization of serial killers as a whole. If we use the first Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, as an example, we can look at the clear problem that the media has at portraying serial killers. And honestly, this couldn't be a better example because Ramirez literally had fans showing up at his trial. Let's look at even a more recent example of how Richard Ramirez is portrayed in media. In the FX series American Horror Story, he's given the classic bad boy treatment. He's portrayed as a cool, suave, rugged man with a dark side, and even becomes the love interest of one of the characters. In the 2019 film Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile, the same is done for serial killer Ted Bundy, who's played by former teenage heartthrob Zac Efron and shown as a smooth, charming killer who seduces his victims. 
This couldn't be further from the truth. The real-life Ted Bundy was considered a creep by most women who knew him, and there's no evidence of him actually seducing one of his victims. And Richard Ramirez was a notorious misogynist even in his personal life, who would have viewed any woman as someone to victimize rather than someone to fall in love with. I'll Be Gone in the Dark, the book, and the documentary fight against this. The victims and their trauma are always front and center, reminding you that these people almost had their lives completely ruined, or in some cases ended, by this man. It's clear that these are the people we need to be focused on. The magnitude of Joseph D'Angelo's crimes almost doesn't register at first. He murdered 13 people, raped 50 women, and burglarized over 120 houses. There are people who had to live with the horror that this man had done to them for years without seeing justice. And while yes, true crime can be fascinating, I'm a fan of true crime myself, but we can never lose sight of this fact. That's something that I believe has been lost in recent media. As the years passed and we become more removed from these crimes, killers like Ted Bundy and Richard Ramirez become almost like fictional characters. But Michelle McNamara fights against this. She doesn't see this killer as some evil genius or criminal mastermind who's able to outsmart the police at every turn, but instead as the weak coward that Joseph James D'Angelo really was that all serial killers really are. Ted Bundy, Richard Ramirez, and Joseph James D'Angelo were not smart. They were not clever. They were not charming. They were weak, cowardly men who contributed nothing to society and failed at almost everything they did. And that is how we have to portray them. So, Pulling back a bit, another great aspect of this book is how Michelle McNamara catalogs the evolution of a serial killer. How his crimes got worse and worse until eventually he was consistently killing people. When Joseph James D'Angelo started as the Visalia Ransacker, he first burglarized homes that were empty, then burglarized them while people were home, and then started sexually assaulting the women who live there. Then when he was the East Area Rapist, he first attacked women who were home alone. Then he attacked husbands and wives and tied them up. Through this time, he had killed people, but only victims who had fought back. Lastly, as the original Night Stalker, D'Angelo started killing victims whether they fought back or not. They could be tied up and posing no threat to him, and he would kill them anyway. At this point, D'Angelo was a full-fledged serial killer. And since we can see there's a long history of assaults before the first murder, we can assume that for most serial killers, there are victims that we don't know about. Let's bring this back to Richard Ramirez who murdered a nine-year-old girl in San Francisco in 1984, and then a year later went on a seventh-month-long killing spree in Los Angeles. If we use the Golden State Killer as an example, then Ramirez probably had other victims that he attacked but didn't murder. Not only in between 84 and his killing spree in 85, but even before his first murder in 1984. Killers usually don't start with murder, but graduate to it. Joseph D'Angelo had already raped 50 women before he fully became a serial killer. So we can assume that with Richard Ramirez or with any other serial killer, that there are probably victims who are still alive before they started their killing sprees. And if there is anything I think Michelle would want us to walk away from this book with, is that every victim needs to be accounted for. It's not enough that these killers are behind bars and that they'll never see the light of day again, because in the end, it's not about them. It's about the victims and their families and knowing that justice was served. So if you like true crime like I do and you can stomach it, since a lot of things in this book are pretty intense, 
I would give I'll Be Gone in the Dark a read. And if not, check out the HBO documentary of the same name. Though the documentary is more about Michelle's journey than it is a breakdown of the actual crime. But either way, it's a good read and it's a good watch. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel, check out our podcast, and follow us on social media at Movies by McManus. I'm your host, Greg, and have a good night.